Hello, and thank you for listening. My name is Luke Mardigan. I'm the owner of the Mardigan Agency located in DeWitt, Michigan. A lot of people ask me, why do you have a radio show? Well, it's because we've been able to do, uh, do something that very few captive insurance agents have been able to do in the insurance space, and that's have a scalable sales team and a self-managing operations team. And what that's allowed us to do is grow to about double the size of the average captive insurance agency in the United States. And on this show, we share how we've been able to achieve that both practically and tactically so that you can implement the same strategies in your business. So let me ask you, listener, do you struggle to talk about money? with clients, with your people? Does it make you feel weird or strange? Uh, Well, a few months ago, we did a show called Don't Mess With My Money, where we talked about why money should never be taboo with your clients or your team. And uh, while the first conversation focused a lot on how this can benefit your team, today's conversation with how it can uh, benefit, will focus on how it can benefit your customers or your clients. And joining me for today's discussion is our special guest. Alec Nuremberg, Director of Operations for the Margin Agency. Thanks for joining us, Alec. Of course. This will be a a good show here. Uh, Let's quickly recap our previous conversation. Why do business owners struggle to talk about uh, money with their customers? Uh, Most common, I think it would be, you know, maybe they don't have any. That could be one way. It's it's uncomfortable. You know, maybe they there's a downturn in in productivity or something like that. And they're in a they're in a rough patch. And that's a tough that's a tough conversation to have. You know, it's kind of like almost some people could feel that they're not successful. For a temporary yeah. period of time, that's a, that, that'd be weird. Particularly in life insurance, at the very yeah. beginning of most people's careers, they sell small term policies yep. because they themselves can't afford to invest in a whole life or a universal life policy. Right, um, and then it's just you know vulnerability. I think yeah, you know, you're, I you're think that's putting the big out there. One. Yeah, right. You're putting out there all of your you know the veins of your organization. So. Well, I mean, even my kids will ask me stuff like, "Dad, how much money do you make?" And I have to right. tell them like, yeah. Dude, "That's actually not appropriate for you to know because you don't have uh, you know for them they're ten and twelve they don't have scale right, right. they have no idea yeah, how they don't much a hundred dollars yeah. is worth let alone a right. hundred million dollars, you know, and so they may think those numbers are big, but they're also kids and they can't. You know, they, it's difficult for them to keep that stuff to for themselves. Sure. So, <clears throat> but you're taught that as a young kid, right? Don't, don't, don't talk ever about ask. Money. Yeah, don't ask anybody how much they make. You yep. know, never tell how many. But tell anybody what you make. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, my mom was in her mid fifties, going through a divorce before we sat down to talk about her financial situation. Yeah. Yeah, that's really too late. Like I should have known about it in her forties, so that yeah. I could help her prepare for retirement. Right. So I'm not supporting her when she's seventy, right? Yeah. In the last year and a half, year year and a half, I mean. I know my parents' finances pretty well now, but we just started, you know, covering that. Yeah. You know, I have my own finances now, and you know, we're kind of. I'll talk to them. They talk to me. You know, we if something happens to them, like you know, out of me and my sister, I'm the one that takes care of it all. You know, yep. I, I I dictate what happens and stuff. So it's important for me to know that. But yeah, just I'm almost thirty, and it just started happening for me. So yep, yeah. And so that that's people go into it, and the, a lot of people never talk about money with their parents, right. so they're just going into it, and it's just taboo. And then yeah. you don't share it with the team because if your team knows how much money the agency's making or how much money your business is making, they're going to automatically assume that you're getting every penny. And right, they this really, vary. Yeah. And, and and honestly, there are employees who aren't trustworthy with that information. Sure. And they don't need to know that information. Right. Um, but being open about you know the the condition of your business, healthy, yeah. unhealthy. Hey, it's a little tight right now. Hey, we had a pretty good month. Um, you know, just having, you know, like uh, we had a team member come to us and ask for a headset to work from home. Yep. And it was like, well, you know what? We, we just had two of the worst months that we've ever had in the agency. So it's not going to happen. Right. And as soon as I can buy it for you, I'll buy it for you. Yeah. You know, so that's very, that's, that's the type of stuff we're talking about. We're not talking sure. about pulling out your profit and loss statement and, yeah. and handing we're, it to your, right, your right. employees or your yeah. clients. We're talking about just generalities of, of direction, health, vision. Yep. And um, a lot of times that just puts people's mind to ease, you know. Uh, yeah. So, hey, it's rough months, but you don't got anything to worry about, like payroll-wise. We're good. Yeah. <clears throat> this is actually uh, really interesting to me because we started talking about this, you know, before we ever brought it onto the show. Um MBA wise, we covered it. Uh, open book management. It's a commonly yeah. used system. You know, people take that approach in, in big corporations and it's very successful. And the idea behind that is you make your employees feel more like a partner rather than just uh, an asset that belongs to you. Right. Um, and then naturally, just natural humanistic behavior, subconsciously, people they start creating these goals in their minds or like, and they can see their productivity at times, you know, depending on what finances they know or what, what they know out of the financial statements. Yep. Um, and just naturally without even any communication at times, people get on the same page and they start moving towards a goal and you see progress and improve. And it's really incredible just the psychology behind it. Like the, you know, just adopting the OBM system 
and seeing where it can take an organization without really communicate. You should always have communication, but seeing where it can take it without it, it's pretty, it's fascinating to me. Yeah. It's it, so if you, to recap the last show, if you are open about the finances of the business mm-hmm. on the level that you're able to, right. And that d- depends on the industry and, right. and how those numbers work out. <clears throat> like for us, it's hard to describe premium written because that's not that number's not even really relevant to our actual paycheck because we get paid a different percentage on of each product on so a right. hundred thousand dollars of new premium could mean a wide different range things, of numbers yeah, yeah. Depending. so you have to have your own metrics but if you do share the specific metrics that can be relatable to your employees mm-hmm. they're they will work harder for you and they will right. set micro goals for themselves to increase the overall bottom line of the agency. Right. And they're more willing to contribute. Um, you know, when we went through, we've gone through several periods just strategically, it makes sense for me not to make a paycheck. In, in those instances, when I share that with the team, I notice there's more buy-in and more empathy toward me as, as I, they'll say, like, you know, Shelby will say things like, no, I'll take care of that. Don't worry about it. You're right. Okay. Right. Well, you know, like, well, she, cause she understands like, dude, you're pretty much working for free. So mm. like I'm getting a check. So let me just take, handle that. Yes. Yeah, right. It's, like, you know, and, and so that's a good example of why that helps. And she has good initiative as it is anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. She's yeah, just but, a yeah, no, great absolutely. human being in yeah, general. Right. Course, and we yeah. have a great culture and all that stuff, but I know right. that that stuff definitely plays into her decision-making. So Without a doubt. when it comes to customers or, you know, we refer to them as clients insureds, how does talking about payments and price with customers benefit our business and how does it benefit the client uh it's transparency for one um you can get even you know in a conversation like that i've seen greg do it uh get a little vulnerable and you know don't go into your personal finances too much but say yeah this is you know me and my wife pay this for our family you know this is this is pretty reasonable for an american family of this size and you know me personally i wouldn't go over this point for auto insurance you know you can you can find a good quality insurance agent and in, in a product below this price point that's going to service you well. You know, you don't have to pay an arm and a leg to get great service. Um, so going into going into details like that and just being transparent, I think it, it builds trust. It, it it reinforces that relationship, and I think they they just want to come back for another product at some point, probably, or or they're going to tell their friends or it, you know. it feels like insider information on their end, right? Right? Because yeah, I've had people come to me and they go, I feel, like I'm paying, I feel like I'm paying too much for auto insurance. Right. Okay, well, let me take a look at it. And I look at it and they have full coverage in two cars and it's a thousand bucks every six months. And I go, oh, my, my wife and I pay 1400 bucks every six months and our cars are a little older than yours. Yeah. Uh, you're getting a pretty good deal. Like we'll quote it still, but just don't don't think that you're getting screwed. Right. Yeah. And they go, oh really? And that's a really bad sales tactic, right? Because <laughs> I mean, but I, I for me, I want them in the best. I actually want my clients to win, of course, more than I want me to win. And right. I know that's going to pay off long term. Yeah. With right. reputation, that will produce sales down the road. Yes. <laughs> and lifetime that's, value. Yeah. That's our our value. That, that's our core values of an agency coming into you know relationships being one of our core values. Yeah. Um, even more so than achievement. And Greg did one on his commission uh, with a company that they changed their entire business model. We had to rewrite them, but it cost more because of the way they changed their business model. So when he went and sat down with them, I, I just told them up front, I'm like, just tell them, let's do the math on your commissions right now. Like you're losing a lot of money on this deal. So they're going to sit down with you. And I imagine when you tell them they're going to pay five grand more per year from the insurance, their first thought's going to be, oh, you're screwing me. You're trying to get more money. Right. It's not true. The way that we had to write these policies, they, these policies pay less than their, their existing policies. So just tell them. And yeah. so he literally led with that. And and they said, oh, wow, well, thanks for telling us that. And he had zero resistance the rest of the appointment. They signed all the paperwork. They paid $5,000 more for insurance because it was the right thing for them. Right. And they knew Greg was wasn't doing it yeah. because he was trying he was to make more, more money. Right. Yeah. He was doing it for them. Yep. Right. Um, and so I, I really think it benefits from a sales perspective because you will have less resistance, the more honest you are about sure. financial yeah. things. Right. Uh, my wife's uh, class, high school class reunion, had her 10 year reunion, yeah, 10 year reunion. And one of the people there is a, uh, a client of another farm bureau agent. And they pay a lot for insurance because they use, uh, pay a lot for insurance. I put air quotes around it for life insurance because they use whole life as an investment strategy. And she literally many drinks in you yelled across the table look how much you guys spend on life insurance every month because because it seems like we spend a lot and i don't know if it's right and i was like well how much is it and she's like like 300 dollars a month and i was like oh no we pay way more than that yeah right month. like yeah. that's 
totally reasonable. Yeah. And if you're, and I know who your agent is and I know that he took care of you. And so that's a good strategy. Oh, okay. I, I, I talked to my other friends and they're paying $20. I'm like, yeah, it's a different strategy. Yeah. Yeah. You can't apples Completely and oranges. Different. Yeah. And, um, that type of transparency, I'm, I mean, they may have been considering letting those policies lapse right. or whatever Coming over or something. Yeah. yeah. And so I, like you know, I helped that other agent helped our company cause we break for the same company and put the client some mind First, at ease. Yes. Right. Right. And who knows in that group who heard that conversation, yeah, it was exactly. like, Oh, right. I don't even have life insurance and yeah. it might lead to something else. Yeah. Um, One of their friends lives closer to our agency than theirs or in the, whatever you know, happens. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anything. Um, and I, you know, I think the big thing is it just squashes those assumptions. So like on a big one is they assume that because we're selling them life insurance and they, you know, well, ins- everyone who I know is insurance has all this money. And so you're just trying to get my money, you know, so you can go on your boat at your lake house and blah, 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 blah. No, there's nothing wrong with that, but that's negative assumptions that yeah, people make for sure. Well, once they know that you're not making that much money, uh, we have the conversation with our mortgage lenders all the time of, Hey, like you're originating a $300,000 loan. How much do you make on that? And so they tell us and it's five figures and like, okay, well, when you refer that over to us, we're making a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. Right. And it's, they go 250, 280. Oh, yeah. Well, I didn't know that. Like, yeah. So like that's how valuable your referral is to us. Even though it takes you five more minutes to send it over, right. you're making 10 times what we make on that policy this year. Cause we want to be their agent for life now. Right. So we might make 250 this year, but we're gonna make a hundred bucks every year for the rest of their life. And that's our lifetime value and why service and customer fulfillment is so important to us. For sure. That loan originator can originate that loan and just move on. Right. They're not going to see that person for five to right. 10 years until they buy their other mortgage. Right. Yep. We're their agent every day. Um, and so that squashes the assumption that we're trying to ask for referrals from mortgage lenders because we're getting rich off of these referrals. Yeah. That's not right. no, the, the, case. Not the case. Uh, we're actually trying to get people in our agency cause we take good care of them yep. and it's best for their client. Yeah. Right. And then the other assumption that people make is they can't afford stuff. So like life insurance is a yeah. big one of, well, we're just not in a position financially. And I'm well, what do you mean? You're not in a position financially. Well, you know, things are tight right now. And it's like, well, uh, but I mean, let me just run some numbers real quick. You're 26. You guys are both working, right? So you're making what, like 80, 90, 100 grand? Yeah. Okay. We're talking like at the most 40, 50 bucks a month. Yeah. Oh, well, we could do that. Like, yeah, it might be less than that. Like, you're healthy young people. It might be 25 bucks a month. Right. Oh, we could definitely do that. Well, okay. Well, then let's, let's get you approved and see where you, you rate it, and then we can make a decision from right. there. And, and not even, you don't even have to make that much, I don't think. You know, like you, it's just priority, really. I mean, people have Hulu Live that pay sixty four ninety nine a month for. You know? Oh yeah, that's right. that's two term policies for a guy my age for for the year. Right. You know, like that's <laughs> literally, literally, yeah, yeah. Like one hundred twenty bucks a year, right? right. Yeah, and that's um, and and when you look at like like Disney came out, they have Disney Plus, right? Yeah, right. It comes with my Verizon plan, and yeah. then they had Disney Plus Premium or whatever it was, so that you could watch the Black Widow. Right. And people buy that in a heartbeat for thirty bucks a month. Yeah. Right. And then and then squawk at half a million dollars in coverage for thirty bucks a month, yeah. but it, it's, it really comes down to value. So if they do value it, when they realize, wow, it costs as much as my Disney Plus Premium then it's not as big of a deal. Right. So that's why transparency is so important. The other side of that is when you tell people how much you make on it. You know, like I, I'll tell people, look, you're, you're spending $200 a year on this policy. I'm making a hundred bucks off of this. Yeah. Right. I'm not selling this to you cause I'm trying to get rich off of you. No. Like that's not even going to take care Do you know of how my many cell we'd have phone to sell of these to get rich. Right. right. Yeah. Like to get rich. <laughs> yeah, right. right. You know, so we're doing this because it's the right thing for you. And, yeah. and there's other strategies cause that helps reta- retain the business cause they have more lines of for business sure. with us. And, and, and there is good business acumen in selling that life policy, but just being transparent about it, sometimes that completely squashes all their objections yep. because they know that my motive is not money. For sure. um, we had one client who wanted to surrender her index universal life yes, and her financial advisor wanted to surrender it so he could reinvest that money with him. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, oh, let me guess. He wants you to reinvest it. Yep. Okay. Well, he's going to make 1% on that for the rest of your life. I'm life. making I'm making two dollars a month off of your policy because it's in the third year and we don't make like anything on renewals for yeah. life insurance. Yes. I go, so I'm I will pay you twenty four dollars a year if you want me to, but this is not the best decision for you. Like this right. was the right yeah. product. And so she didn't surrender it. She's still paying on it. And because I didn't have skin in the game. Yep. I, 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 I literally was just good, solid, sound advice based upon my licensing, knowledge, and experience and the fact that I give a crap about them. Yep. More than my own pocketbook. Um, so it, that's why telling, being tr- more transparent with your money helps you and your customers. Without a doubt. So at what point does this come up? Um, you kind of have to fill it out. There's some people who money is, you know, there's a concept that we talk about. The more money you make, 
the less valuable it is to you. Yeah, yeah. Law of diminishing marginal utility. Yeah. That's it right there. That's it. The law yeah. of diminishing marginal utility. Yeah, we and could so have a show about that sometime. Yeah, we yeah, should. Because yeah. uh, I just had a conversation with a high income earner about yeah. that. And um, you have to fill out how valuable money is to them. Yeah. And for some people, it's everything because every day they stress about it. Those people, you might want to bring it up early in the conversation. For some people who don't worry about money at all, they, they're financially set, you may never bring it up. Yeah. So it's really about using that that yeah, time uh, place discretion. And, yeah, and, yeah, discretion, judgment. Knowing, knowing yeah. your perfect client. So uh, don't mess with my money 2.0. Thank you for listening to today's conversation. Uh, please follow us on Facebook at The Mardigan Agency and on Instagram also. And of course, we have the Be Insured radio show with Luke Mardigan Facebook page where we post the videos and quotes from the show and you can uh, I'll catch all of our past episodes on iTunes and Spreaker. Thanks so much for listening and we'll see you next time on Be Insured.